bit. Cut off the black and white. What is this, a carrot? Wait a minute. Those vegetables look familiar. Where have I seen them before? Oh no. Tonic Trouble. Yay. Tonic Trouble is a game made by Ubisoft that came out in 1999 for the PC and Nintendo 64. The game was originally made to test the 3D engine used by Rayman 2, The Great Escape, so you should notice the similar gameplay and character design from the two games. In fact, Ed, the main protagonist from Tonic Trouble, and Rayman are voiced by the same guy, David Gassman. Ed is a purple alien janitor who works on the Albatross, and during an exploration mission, he drinks and spits out a strange liquid and throws it away. The cane lands on Earth next to a former Viking named Gro. He notices the mutation it causes to the surrounding area, and then drinks it for himself. Ed is then sent down to Earth to retrieve the can. The list of allies include Doc, who invents... Inventions. His daughter Susie... Hmm. Look at those. Non-limbs. And Agent XYZ, who is the leader of the Resistance and your informant. Gro is the villain who found the can, and is apparently going to take over the world with it. Tonic Trouble has you running around killing mutated vegetables while collecting thermostats for extra life point on your life gauge, actual bonus lives, and 120 antidotes for later in the game. There are 9 levels in the game and in most of them you collect and bring back 6 items to the dock so that he can make you a new invention, and also a machine that catapults you into Gro's kingdom. Why you would need springs, pigs, dominoes, feathers, and whatever these are to build a catapult is beyond me. The game is, at its core, a puzzle solving and platforming game although I'd say it has more puzzle solving than Rayman. The game seems really open, but you can't access most of the map until you get one of his inventions, so it ends up being very linear. For the first level, you start off defenseless like in Rayman 1, and you are set off to find the Doc who is held captive in a cave. I know it's the first level, but I shouldn't be able to run past every single enemy. I got a little lost and turned around due to there not being a minimap, and every time I entered the room I was just in, the free life collectible was there again, making it seem like I had infinite lives, which took away a lot of the fun. What more so took away the fun are the controls. They're bad. Maybe if I played this on my PC it would control better, but the game is too old to play on my laptop so I was forced to play it on my N64. For such a simple control scheme, they should work well, but it feels blocky and glitchy, which is not what you want for a platforming game. Once you find Doc, you have to open a cage that contains... Wait, a crunch bar machine? Okay. Ed pulls the lever, eats the candy, and becomes... Super Ed! Yeah! Why does this happen? Who cares, because... Super Ed! Wait, all he can do is kick? F After saving the Doc, he brings you to his machine he needs the parts for, and sends you off to find all the missing pieces. There is a map, but it doesn't show you where you are in relation to it, so you kind of have to study it to know where you're going, although there are a lot of signs to help you out. The platforming gets stale, but they do throw in some cool viable platforms to make it semi-enjoyable. Once you get your way through the level and collect all the pieces Doc needs, you return to him and get your new power-up or weapon. You got the Peace Shooter! Doc throws some box into his machine and that's... all he does? Really? The weapons you get are kind of fun to use, but they seem like they're only thrown in to try and give the game some variety. Which it does, but some are more annoying than helpful. The worst aspect of this game is by far the camera. There are a ton of older games and even some new games like this where the camera just doesn't work. It's always in the wrong place when you need to see what's in front of you, and usually you would spin it manually, but... Can't do that! The game doesn't allow you to spin the camera during most of the game, which is insanely frustrating. It also ruins depth perception and makes it hard to judge jumps and ledges, which causes a lot of fall deaths, but at least he's happy about it. The game is full of glitches, but what did I expect from this game? It was made to test an engine and they just kind of threw it out as an entirely new game. It is what it is, a basic test of a beta for Rayman that doesn't live up to any expectation it has because it literally has none. But hey, at least he's happy, right? I thought the nostalgia of this game would help, but that was lost nearly as soon as I started playing. This game just isn't good, but who would expect it to be? It is what it is. Well that does it for another one of my gaming reviews. I had a great time making this video, but less of a great time playing the game. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. I'm Happy Mask Gamer and I'll see you next time.